Hello, good morning, everyone around the world. See you again. Our video today is about the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, 7378. Please click the subscribe button so that you will be notified on my next videos. My video is about Marpol video number seven, which composed Annex six, part one. This is the prevention of air pollution from ships entered into force on May. 19, 2005. Introduction. After viewing this video, you will be able to enumerate air pollutants from combustion and other sources. You will be able to state present developments, requirements under this annex. Explain survey and certification process. Explain requirements on emission control from ships, explain spatial requirements for oil rigs, state the equipment and installations for air pollution control, and you will be able to explain the effects of air pollution. This Annex 6 sets limits on sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxide emissions from ship exhaust and prohibits the de deliberate emission of ozone depleting substances. It includes a global cap on the sulfur content of bunker fuel and limit CFC and the incineration of certain products. Effects of air pollution. About acid rain is mostly caused by emissions of compounds of sulfur, nitrogen, and carbon, which react with the water molecules in the atmosphere to produce acids. Can also be caused naturally by the splitting of nitrogen compounds by the energy produced by lightning strikes. The smog. The word smog is a portmanteau of smoke and fog. Classic smog results from large amounts of coal burning in an area caused by a mixture of smoke and sulfur oxide. Effects on health, harmful for senior citizens, children, and people with heart and lungs conditions such as epithemia, bronchitis, and asthma. It can inflame breathing passages, decrease the lungs working capacity, cause shortness of breath, pain when inhaling deeply, wheezing and coughing. It can also eye, cause eye and nose irritation, and it dries out the protective membrane of the nose and throat, and interferes with the body's ability to fight infection, increasing susceptibility to illness. Ozone depletion is one of the effects of air pollution a slow steady decline of about 4% per decade in the total volume of ozone in Earth's stratosphere or ozone layer since the late 1970s. Ozone depletion also decreased in stratosphere ozone over Earth's polar region during the same period. CFCs and other 
contributory substances are commonly referred to as ozone depleting substances, ODS for short. It will also increase UV or ultraviolet rays. Ozone, while a minority constituent in the Earth's atmosphere, is, is responsible for most of the absorption of UV radiation. Ozone depleting effects. A decrease in atmospheric ozone is expected to give rise to significantly increased levels of UV near the surface of the Earth. Biological effects. The main public concern regarding the ozone hole has been the effects of increased surface UV and microwave radiation on human health. Effects on human UV, the higher energy UV radiation absorbed by ozone is generally accepted to be a contributory factor to skin cancer. Increased surface UV leads to increased tropospheric ozone, which is a health risk to humans. Effects on crops. An increase of UV radiation was expected to affect crops. A number of economical important species of plants, such as rice, depend on cyanobacteria residing on their roots for the retention of nitrogen. Global warming is the increase in the in the average temperature of Earth's near surface air and ocean since the mid 20th century and its projected continuation. Global surface temperature increased 0 0.74 plus or minus 18 plus or minus 0 0.8 degrees centigrade is equivalent to 1.33 plus or minus 0 0.32 degrees Fahrenheit between the start and the end of the 20th century. Global warming, physical impacts. Whether it is increasing temperature is likely to lead the increasing precipitation but the effects and the storms are less clear. Increased areas will be affected by drought. Physical impacts, there will be increased intense tropical cyclone activity. There will be increased incidents, incidents of in extreme high sea level exploding tsunamis. Global warming have a number of effects on the oceans that includes rising sea levels, geothermal expansion and melting of glaciers and ice sheets. The amount of oxygen dissolved in the oceans may decline with adverse consequence for ocean life. The greenhouse effect is the heating of the surface of a planet or moon due to the presence of an atmospheric containing gases that absorb and emit infrared radiation. The greenhouse gases trap heat within the surface troposphere system. This is the greenhouse effect on the atmosphere 
we have the greenhouse gases and we have the surface of the earth or land. Greenhouse gases are gases in an atmosphere that absorb and emit radiation within the thermal infrared ring. Earth's most abundant greenhouse gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, and CFCs. Ways to prevent air pollution. The fact is that human activity contribute the most to air pollution. Considering harmful effects of air pollution, now it is very essential that everyone should contribute a bit to prevent air pollution. There are certain ways that one can help to reduce the emission of air pollutant in the atmosphere. Carpool is one to prevent or to minimize air pollution. Forming and implementing a carpool will reduce the number of cars, thereby preventing air pollution by cutting down the use of fossil fuels. This way, it will help in the sustainable use of fossil fuel and its conservative conservation for the future generations. Vehicle, vehicle care, which one also to minimize air pollution. Timely servicing of the car helps to keep it in a good condition and also minimizes fuel exhaust. Driving the car at an average speed and turning off in traffic is a key to push or to save fuel. Make sure to use unleaded petrol and up for regular pollution checking on your car. Another way is for public transport. Whether possible, try to travel public transport. This helps in two ways prevent air pollution and increases public income. If you are going to a nearby place, go by walking or use bicycle. Instead of using your vehicle, the objective is to minimize the use of fuel as far as possible. By using alternative energy source is to minimize air pollution. Another effective way is to prevent air pollution is to use alternative energy sources such as solar energy, hydroelectric energy, and nowadays sophisticated technologies such as solar water heaters are introduced to generate and other energy forms for the household use. Ener saving energy or will, of course, help to prevent air pollution. Switch off the lights, fan, air conditioners, televisions, and other appliances when not in use. You can also share a room with others when the air conditioner or fan is on, instead of switching them in every room. You can also minimize air pollutant. Always try to minimize the smoke emission as it can contribute to air pollution. One way is to compost dried leaves and kitchen waste instead of burning them. Composting will also give you organic fertilizer for your garden while buying the products. Always choose air friendly and recyclable products that will minimize the emission of pollutants. 
air pollutants from combustion, nitrogen oxides, or NOx, are the generic term for group of highly reactive gases, all of which contain nitrogen and oxygen in varying, varying amounts. Many of the nitrogen oxides are colorless and odorless. One com common pollutant, nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, alone with particles in the air, can often be seen as a reddish-brown layer over many urban areas. Nitrogen oxides form from fuel when fuel is burned at high temperature as in combustion process. The primary man-made source of nitrogen oxide are motor vehicles, electric utilities, and other industrial, commercial, and residential sources than burn fuels. Sulfur dioxide, or SO2, belongs to the family of sulfur oxide gases, or SOX. These gases dissolve easily in water. Sulfur is prevalent in all raw materials, including crude oil, coal, and ore that contains common metals like aluminum, copper, zinc, lead, and iron. Sulfur oxide gases are formed when fuel containing sulfur such as coal and oil is burned. And when gasoline is extracted from oil or metals are extracted from oil. Sulfur dioxide dissolves in water vapor to form acid and interact with other gases and particles in the air to form sulfide sulfates, and other products that can be harmful to people and their environment. Over 65% of so-called dioxide releases to the air, or more than 13 million tons per year, comes from electric utilities, especially those that burn coal. Carbon monoxide or CO is colorless, odorless gas that is formed when carbon in fuel is not burned completely. It is a component of motor vehicle exhaust, which contributes about 56% of all carbon monoxide emissions. Other non road engines and vehicles such as construction equipment and boats contribute about 22% of all carbon monoxide emissions. Other sources of carbon monoxide emissions include industrial processes such as metal processes and chemical manufacturing, residential wood burning, and natural sources such as forest fires. The highest levels of carbon monoxide in the outside air typically occur during the older months of the year when inversion conditions are more frequent. Lead is a metal found naturally, naturally in the environment, as well as in manufactured products. The major source of lead emission have historically been motor vehicles, such as cars and trucks and industrial sources. Due to phase out of bleeded gasoline, 
metals processing is the major source of lead emission to the air today. Other stationary sources are waste incinerators, utilities, and lead acid batteries manufacturers. In 1970, lead emission sources is about 221,000 tons. In 1997, it was reduced. The lead emission sources reduced to 3,915 tons. Volatile organic compounds are aerosols, chlorofluorocarbons, hazardous air pollutants, lead, carbon monoxide, ground level ozone, mercury, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxide, refrigerants, propellants, methane, and others. Particulate matter, also known as particle pollution or PM for sure, is a complex mixture of extremely small particles and liquid droplets. Particulate pollution is made up of a number of components, including acids such as nitrates and sulfates, organic chemicals, metals, and soil or dust particles. The size of particles is directly linked to their potential for causing health problems. Inhalable coarse particles such as those found near roadways and dusty, in the, and dusty industries are larger than 2.5 micrometers and smaller than 10 micrometers. These particles can be directly emitted from sources such as forest fires, or they can form when gases emitted from power plants, industries, and automobiles react in the air. Continuous feeding is defined as the process whereby water is fed into a combustion chamber without human assistance while the incinerator is in normal operating conditions with a combustion chamber operative temperature between 800 degrees centigrade and 1200 degrees centigrade. Shipboard incineration means incineration of waste or other matter on board ship. If such waste or other matter were gener generated during the normal operation of that ship. Also, depleting substances means controlled substances defined in paragraph four of Article One of the Montreal Protocol and substances that deplete the ozone layer. In 1997, listed in annexes A, B, C, and D to the said protocol in force at the time of application or interpretation of this annex. Introduce new installation in relation to regulation of this annex means the installation of systems, equipment, including new portable fire extinguishers, units, insulations, and other material on a ship after the date on which this annex enters into force, but exclude repair or recharge of previously installed systems, equipment, installations, or other material or a charge of portable fire extinguishing units. 
this is the end of my video. Thank you for listening. My next video will be Marple video number eight, which is Marple Annex Six Part Two. Please click the subscribe button so that you will be notified on my next videos. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. This is Chief Engineer Jose Garcia Bogan, PhD. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel to view my next videos. Thank you. Bye bye.